Hey, live on Pat Sound Bites Unplugged Podcast. Rocking the world with new music, with new video all the time. And I got this crazy cat somewhere over here. I can't figure this all out. This Zoom thing with Dale George Lytle of Angeles. And uh, Dale's been rocking for quite a long time. And he's got a great killer track out. Uh, it's going to be a title track of an album called Running Like an Outlaw. Boy, have we all done that before, Dale. And he's got a great video, which we're going to play as well. Dale, how are you? Great. Thank you for having me. Oh, man, love to have you. You got, you got some story doing a little prep work on Dale and his uh, killer band, Angelus. I mean, formed in 77, uh, rocking with all the rockers back in 84, debut album, We're No Angels. That in 2014 goes platinum. Not many bands can say that, Dale. So no. congratulations for that. And uh, I look forward to uh, playing uh, all your tracks as much as we can and give you as much exposure as possible. So uh, certainly Thank you, thanks for your time, my friend. And uh, I always you, start, Dale, as a, what, what, where did you find the, where did you find your love for music growing up? Was your, your mom, dad, family members? Did you see the Beatles? What was it that you said, I want to do this? I went to a grand funk concert at Anaheim Convention Center in Los Angeles and well, in Anaheim, California. And, and um, after seeing Mark Farner and Grand Funk, I, I came out of there and I, there was a big riot going on and whatnot. And I, <laughs> I told my mom that's what I wanted for Christmas was a guitar. And I got one. Good for you. Yeah, yeah, I... I've been blessed to uh, see Grand Funk a bunch of times and interview Mark uh, yeah. and interview Don Brewer. And, uh, okay. oh, my goodness. Yeah, I can see how that would change uh, anybody's uh, way of thinking. If you weren't a musician, Dale, what would you be doing? What kind of career would you be lined up with? Was there any other hobbies or any other interests? I, You know, I really enjoyed picking up junk cars and, you know, the Scrap metal and and dogs rescuing animals, homeless and abused oh. dogs. Yeah. Ah, oh, good for you. That's a, you know we don't. There's a, not enough of that these days, especially in this crazy world that we live in. I know my brother. He's been always rescuing dogs from down south and uh, trying to help out instead of uh, yeah. putting these wonderful animals that don't have a place to go to sleep, which is crazy. Well, that's cool and. Yeah. Uh, in 77, you and uh, Dave, uh, I'm not good with last names. Rodman. Rodman formed Angelus and uh, got things going. Did you, were you like in, in school, were you like in a battle of a bands? Did you have any, did you play in school, any bands or? You know, we, we I remember in Vertigo Hills High School, I think we were actually, the band wasn't called Angelus, it was called English at the time. And I believe we did do a battle of the bands. I have an article about it. And I believe we won that. Mm -hmm. And that had uh, Lyle Bemis in it and Linda. Um, can't remember her last name. Uh, Steve Mills, I believe, on drums. Uh, it, it was a rather good band. It was probably me and Dave had avant-garde, then English. Then we decided to go with Angela. I love the logo. I mean, that's yeah. beautiful. That is that. I mean, I think, I think logos really tell a little bit of a story of the background of what the music is. I mean, if you had, you know, I don't know, just something silly, people would go, well, they wouldn't maybe take it serious, but it looks good behind you, brother. Yeah. Cool. Look, look, yeah. I, if I'm going to promote and support, yeah. I got to do it the right way. I don't know about all my other brother colleagues out there. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of great, uh, music podcast and friends that I got throughout the country that I'm yeah. sure you've already spoken to or will be speaking to uh, that are great connections with Jody. Uh, yeah, Jody's excellent. Yeah, no, I loved, I loved the logo. Where did you, uh, where did you come up with the name? How did the, uh, I mean, you're out in California. You, where did the name come about? Well, we were started in California. I lived there my whole life until uh, August of last year. We moved to Missouri for a short while. And then resided here and bought a house in Ohio. And just, I think it came from like the Los Angeles Times originated. That's the logo they use. And then the actual lettering, the font, and then the flames came about. And a guy named Jim Evans did the album cover 
And that was what, what the ball and the big A behind it. And it was like a collaboration of, I believe, a drummer was at the time involved, Paul Del Basio, which is now also the drummer, has been for quite a few years of, of um, uh, Danger, Danger singer Ted Poley. And it, um, I believe he had a lot to do with, with the design, overall design as well. Him and Jim, and I didn't have a lot to do with that at the time. Nah, I, I, I love it. I think it speaks for itself and it sticks out. It kicks ass and takes names. I see in 84, you signed with Mystic Records and uh, you released a debut album, We're No Angels. And the, uh, it says the title track of the album was decided by Kevin Dubrow of Quiet Riot. What's the story behind that? That sounds pretty cool. Well, we used to play with them a lot and Kevin and Dubrow and Quiet Riot and Rudy be in Quiet Riot at one point by Kevin. He took me to Frankie's uh, place and, and uh, um, uh, got uh, uh, somewhere in California. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways, um, took me to his apartment and uh, um, uh, anyways, uh, we were playing with them at the Troubadour, and I come walking in, and and this is like several times of, of playing with them. He was a tall, tall guy. Kevin was a, you know, um, real tall, and we walked in. I walked in the Troubadour, and, you know, I looked up, and I was going to say hi, and he goes, oh, it's the angels. And I looked at <laughs> him, and I said, we're in all, you know, effing angels. And, and, um, Far from uh, it, right? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, that was, I, I took that story back to where I was living at the time. I basically didn't have nowhere to live. I was living at the recording studio we were recording at and um, Harlequin Studios. And the guy that was there and hung out a lot, I told him the story and he goes, that's what you should name your record. And so, inadvertently, Kevin did name it, you know. And, um, so yeah, it was it was um, it really really it was because of Kevin's you know coming off and saying oh it's the angel you know mm -hmm. and you know back then and like it is still now it's it it's always the battle of the bands when you're trying to make it everyone wants to be at the top you know and as much as everyone tries to say oh it's not it's the same as it always has been in my opinion oh absolutely yeah, and that's uh, the story behind that yeah and, no I love it that I think I, well it was and, and like. Not quite North Hollywood. Um, Lake, I want to say not Lake View Terrace. Um, um, River, it's off of, uh, uh, God, it's right in the tip of my tongue. Riverside Drive, uh, right off of Riverside Drive. And um, uh, gosh, I'm going to think of it before this shows up. Okay, cool. Well, that works for me. I, I'm, I've been to California. I went to where did I go? I went to San Francisco for a conference many years ago, okay. and uh, unfortunately, I haven't been back. And I know I promised my wife I would get her. She loves animals, and we would get down to San Diego, go down to the San Diego Zoo. But now that I've been in the music world, I got every artist going. You got to come to the studio, come hang out. So <laughs> I don't. I and go to Nam and this and that, and I'm like, I'll I'll get there. I'll sooner or later. But uh. Wow, you shared the stage with great rock legends. I mean, Molly Crew, Quiet Riot, Ronnie yeah. James Dio. Uh, I mean, Jesus, yeah, you yeah. you've done it all. You played at the whiskey. I mean, uh, those were the good old days, as we would Actually, say, right there. Ticket stub. You want to hand me that right there, Connie? Um, it was um, actually us playing at the. Um, oh, I should have the. I've got actually the one with Molly Crew too, but this is the Starwood. Wow. See that right there. Yeah. Well, but that was back in, I think, 81. And that was a real famous club in Hollywood. And uh, we played with Guns N' Roses and the Troubadour. We had played, we played twice one night with Motley Crue. Um, we, I, you know, and back then I didn't see any of the, the bands that we played with. I would just stay in my bedroom room and stay in the corner and, and just play my guitar. And, you know, I would hear people come, you know, would come up and say, you know, they're a good band or whatever. And, um, yeah, we, we had a great time with Dio in San Diego.
we played there with with um, and that was when Jake Jake was in the band, uh -huh. and uh, he was on guitar. It was like eighty one. Uh, we did Miramar and NTC, the, the Marine bases, and I think the greatest pleasure was signing, you know, hundred and fifty dollar bills underneath Ronnie James Eel's name, and I don't know how many of that that me and Dave did, and that was really uh, a lot of fun. And we, we, you know, we were crazy and we were a wild, wild rock band. And, uh, man, it was so many good times, you know, and, and after the shows, not those shows, we did two um, with Dio. And, and then I actually ran into Wendy at the um, Rock and Roll Hall, Metal Hall of Fame, Metal Hall of Fame. Um, and then we, we were also, um, we, you know, did the red carpet thing. Um, it's online as well. But, yeah, I finally got to talk to her after, like, 30 years and, and ask her what, you know, she went and took me, and, and she also took Jake to audition for Ozzy. And I don't remember ever, I don't think it ever happened, but I remember being, it was Ronnie had a red um, um, Mercedes, and Kevin had a red Corvette. They had, you know, everyone like was into red cars, I guess. And, and um, yeah, it was really some fun times. Uh -huh. Thank you. I keep wanting to say Lake Butera. No, it's not Lake Butera. Ah, I'll get it. You'll I'll get, get it, it, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna get it. Uh, I mean, you're you're rocking with all of the the, the big ones out there. And in 2014, uh, what about where would I go here? Uh, well, in '84. So you release uh, "We're No Angels," and here it is in 2014 that it yeah. goes platinum. But I, but take me back to those days. I mean. Um, after you came out with We're No Angels, what happened? What was the the stoppage well, that there was, the, you know, it was just a one-hit wonder? Was it the label? Where did it go off track? I mean, you guys it, had everything going on. Doug Moody, you know, it was, um, uh, it wasn't a record company that, that did much for you and sold everything overseas. He told us to go on tour. He advised us. And he wasn't going to give us any money, but it was like, just get get in the van and go. And, you know, I was really good friends with Ron Bushy as well from Iron Butterfly. In fact, we, we I played with him and a guy in Vida at a place called Devonshire Downs Outdoor Stadium in Southern California. And um, he, he passed away about a little over about, about a year ago. And, you know, uh, the rest in peace, Ronnie. And, I mean, uh, um, so... Um, uh yeah i i don't know it just the whole thing um we did we, we opened for bon jovi it was striper angelus and bon jovi and it was a great show um and we didn't tour dave didn't want to tour he was like afraid to i think leave hollywood we didn't have parents really at the time at all Our, my, my parents had passed away his weren't you know a, his dad had passed away. So really no guidance to really was, put you on the right track or keep you on the right track. Right. There was nobody to really help us at all. And so we were kind of a, a reluctant, you know, and a little bit afraid to just go travel across the country, even though we should have just done it. And Ron Bushy said that was his advice that we should have just done that. And it's unfortunate that we didn't do it, but I think if we had, like Rat was out there then, and you know we played with them. We we're you know we we're friends with Molly. We we're friends with um, you know all of them. I mean, Nikki and uh, and I, Frank, whatever, would be on the phone. We'd talk about you know um, he gave me his manager's number, Alan Kaufman at the time, and they were working with getting assigned and having him be our manager as well. And they were out there playing. Everybody was out there playing, and I think we would have been out in Ohio playing you know then that if there would have been if we were doing a small club and something were to happen i think we would have gotten invited i think we would have gotten some you know it would have elevated and it's just unfortunate that we didn't take that step and just go and well we you know dale don't feel i always say things happen for a reason and we right. live and learn every day and look what look you know 20 30 40 years you're sitting here talking to me in new york so right. it's still there. The love is obviously the love for music that you have is still there. You still have the products to put out. You got a great logo. You got great tunes. So, yeah, you know, you look back and you go, what the, you know, I can say it, what the fuck? But, 
You know, it's just um, yeah. you you weren't the only ones. You know, I get to interview great folks like yourself, and I would always say, wow, you signed with Capital in 80-something or 70-something. And, you know, the guys would say, we had no idea what we were signing, Pat. We were so drunk and stoned and stupid. We signed, yeah. and after all the number one hits, all the money, it, they took everything. And yeah. uh, one of the guys, you know, I'm a fan you know, at the time. I love the music, and I'm a big fan. And I would say, yeah, but this is great. You toured the world. You did this. You did that. And one guy says to me, I'll never forget. He says, you know what You know what a label really is, Pat? And I said, I, I don't know. A bank. They loan you the money. They loan you this. They loan you that. You sign your yeah. life away. And give me three more hits, or you're now part of the flock until the next band comes and with a number one hit. And yeah, now today, fast forward, everybody has their own label, their own music. They own everything. They don't trust anybody. I mean, I'm not going to blast Spotify, but the music world has taken such a beat. And, you know, a million down streams and you make five cents is ridiculous to me. And I tell all yeah. my listeners here in New York, buy the album, buy it. Dale can't sign Spotify, although it's right. great that you buy the digital so you can yeah. hear it. But I, I want to feel it. I want to read the liner notes. I want to know who produced it. I want to, I, I got to feel it. I'm old school like you. Go to a yeah. record store, pull the cover out and yeah. see and feel it, you know? And uh, know. what a world we live in now, Dale. I tell you that. It's crazy. You no, know, I'm really glad we have a great label, Dark Star Records with <laughs> Jeffrey Swanson and, and Lloyd Freeze. And, you know, they, you, you don't want really to get paid, you know, regularly. But they're family. They're they're. You need advice. Like I, I'm singing now, and you know he, we talked the other day, and he goes, "Well, stand up a little more to you know. Don't be right in front of the drum set." And I'm thinking, well, I, I you know, for some reason I thought, well, I thought Mark was, and I'm, I don't know, I'm, <laughs> I've never been a lead singer before, and here I, I'm like, oh yeah, and I'm looking, and I'm watching Mark, and I'm going, oh yeah, he's he's to the stage left a little bit of, of Don Brewer and and I there's never really it, it, when you're watching them it seems like they're right but they're not they're kind of stage off a little bit you know and things like that and he advised us to also put the logo behind us we have a really big logo just like that banner and we don't use it that often but we're going to get a stand for it and we're going to start using it and it at, at our shows and we have we have one coming up at the Vortex and in, in here and um uh, Akron, uh, which is about 30 miles uh, south of Cleveland. And it's a really nice venue. And then we got one at Club 253 um, coming up also. Uh, that's the 17th of September. And then the other one's October 1st at the Vortex. So, Well, that's good. That you're, <clears throat> you're able to get on the road. You got great guidance. Dark Side Records, kudos to that's them all. for doing Dark the right stuff. thing. Yeah, Dark, Dark Star, Star Records. Records. Yep. And then, you know, they, they, they've done so much. <laughs> and they, the great thing also is we do the videos, and we just got a new video out for Running Like an Outlaw. And Jeffrey has um, all these movies. He's got um, S SGL Entertainment, the, the uh, killer movie channel. And he's got that thing, I mean, literally on so many platforms, I guess is what you call it. Um, you know, it was like the other day, I was joking to him. We were talking to him, and I, I'm like, you know, I'm talking to a movie executive now. You know, he's not just a, you know, a label. And he just had Tony Martin. I mean, the guys, you know, has had some pretty good name bands, and 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 Vante and, and Voodoo Moonshine, and and he's had um, just a really good, a lot of good artists on his label. And Tony Martin from Black Sabbath, the singer, was just um, had his latest album called Thorns on there, and. You know, we were up against all these, and then we decided to um, do the radio campaign, and it, it went real well, um, you know, ending up number 22 on the Billboard main card. So, yeah. Awesome. But that, then, that's uh, great. I mean, yeah. that's outstanding. No, it's all good. You know, it's 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 funny you mentioned that because a lot of artists are going, they're, they're, they're talking to these uh, movie producers. Sorry to interrupt you. Toluca Lake, California. Anyway. <laughs> so behind the whole time you're talking and I'm talking, I'm still trying to. What no, no, it's good. 
Yeah. Now, a lot of artists are uh, talking to these filmmakers uh, to see if their songs could be used in the movie business. And uh, a Whoa. lot of good money there, man. A lot Whoa. of great money. We got one um, from Hell on the High Hills, our last record. Uh, not before, the one before Running Like an Outlaw on Dark Star. Uh, Jeffrey, speaking of Jeffrey, got us three songs. Um, Hell on High Hills opens the, the movie called Hell Week, 10th Anniversary. Comes out October 10, 11. Um, and we've got Heal the Wounds is in it and also Celebrates in it. Very good. We got well, there you go. Oh. And that coming up. Things have turned around for you quite well, Dale. I, you write all your songs. You're pretty much the lead songwriter. Is right. um, where does the uh, where do the ideas come from, Dale? Your life experiences for yourself, or how you does know, that I, work? I'm you grab it really yet, as of yet, really write a lot of the lyrics. I'm I'm mainly the hook writer, and then the singers usually follow my guitar hooks. For the okay, whole and you know, they come just from outer space. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what. You know, it's like I pick up the guitar and the last, you know, 12 years, my wife Connie's been, you know, she knows when I got something new. And it's like every time I go to pick up the guitar, I just, I've never been one to sit down and and do covers. And I've always, every time I find the guitar and so really interesting. And when I pick it up, I lean towards, I, I just... A new thing comes out. I touch it when it's got that amplification. And even with my little practice amp in the front room and sitting there watching TV, if I pick that thing up, it just, a new thing comes out. And and I don't know where it comes from. What What's your go-to guitar? Do you use a Gibson? you use a Les Paul, a Strat? Uh, uh, you know, I, I've got a Les Paul. I use that on Nothing But Love. and But for the most part, I, I, I play a lot of Kramer's. And okay. I got a Charvel, and um, I've had a Strat, I believe, and but I, it's not one that I've, I've played a lot. Um, and I, I used to play a Paul a lot, um, a, 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 quite a few, quite a bit. But lately, it's been just my Charvels and my. You, get, you got any um, any customized pickups in the guitars? Nah, just your, you know, That's the Mar right. the Seymour Duncan's. Cool. Yeah. And, I'm not uh, a guitarist, but I know all my – I have a lot of fans that are. They always say, don't forget to ask about the rig, man. You got to ask uh, about yeah. what they play. It's all but good. I just got myself a 50-watt a um, EVH um, head, and it really screams. It's it's, it's wonderful. Um, I also have a 100-watt, and I, you can't really – they both have so much volume. It's insane, and and, and – so much gain, but I think the 50 watt does have a little bit more screen. But it, it's they're loud, they're good, they they got a real good crunch. Um, you don't have to use a game pedal with them, um, you know, distortion pedal, or anything. I mean, they, they really kick out the the the, the um, you know distortion and drive. Digging up, uh, you know, doing some research on you. I see you had a book out. Yeah. Dale, the book the of Dale. George uh, D Dale George Lytle, Layers of Success from the Band Angela. What what was the thought of uh, what made you think about? There it is. What made you think about uh, putting uh, your ideas into words here, or sharing uh, what was in your mind to put onto paper? Well, you know, a lot's got to do with my, just my life story. Um, yeah, my mom was murdered when I was nineteen oh. because of living at home playing the guitar. I'm sorry and, to see that. You know, he came home on a Sunday, and this guy that she had been married to for a year and a half, and ran the truck into the garage and and oh. get in the house and and you know this is what I'm, I'm at the studio down the street, and my brother comes running down the street, and then I'm hearing an ambulance come up, and and he was nine at the time, and uh, that's Derek, and you know he blew her head off with a shotgun because because I was still living at my house and still living at home, not having a job. And I was 19 years old and it was like, give me a little bit of a break here, you know? Well, he didn't give me any break at all. So I um, ended up hitting the streets with my guitar. Uh, we were doing high schools. We just did Friday. Actually, it's a funny story because my mom and myself actually made the same paper. 
you know, in newspapers, they, they all, like one page all attach. Yeah. Well, we, we both made the same paper. One was the article about us playing at Lockford Center High School for free at lunch. Um, and she was waiting outside in her truck. She never saw me play, but she did hear me play. She was in the truck, um, parked outside the school from what I understand. And, um, so that was Friday. She was murdered Sunday. And the paper and some of the hunger come out every once a week on Thursdays. Uh, so we both made the same newspaper on the same page at the same time. Was your was your what would your mom have a love for music? Is that where you got yeah. it from? Besides yeah, the Grand she, Funk, she loved. Um, she's the one that dropped me off at the Grand Funk concert, and she loved Elvis. Um, I I loved Elvis as well. I think he was just um, you know he had he had it going on. He had the voice. He had the looks. He had the moves. Absolutely. And, you know, he, he was the king of rock and roll. And a lot of people I see on Facebook, you know, try to disclaim that by saying Led Zeppelin is. And yes, Led Zeppelin is. And, and, but, you know, I, I think it's, I know the Beatles are too. And I mean, you, you got Elvis, you know, you got Chuck Berry. Yeah. You, know, you got Jerry Lee Lewis. You got, you got, um, uh, you know, you got Black Sabbath. You got Led Zeppelin. You got Grand Funk. You got, uh, the Rolling Stones, my God. I, I love the Rolling Stones. Um, and then everything just started to evolve. And, Absolutely. And you saw I, 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 I got to, uh, well, I can call him a good friend now, Billy Gibbons. And I get to hang with Billy. And Billy would always tell me, yeah. he still tells me, go back to the blues. Go back to the Chuck Berry days. Go back. Yeah. Go go to, you know, to B.B. King, Alfred King, and yeah, Robert Johnson, was... and all that. And yeah. you'll see what we're dealing with today but it, that, look it's all good so writing the book was really therapeutic for you uh, as a way of relief to put it into words of your life story which and i'm so sorry to hear about your mom that sucks you know, but. It, it made me um get write more gothic music darker things like keeper of the gate and god country and king and and some so many of the more um things that i write like that 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 um uh, are more mystical, like uh, killers of the game, and and just uh, you know more, you know uh, like Page. You know, I, I love his darker side as well. He had some really interesting, um, you know, notes and and the way he he would he would um, uh, construct his melodies, and and I, I love that a lot. And you know, it teaches you to be strong. Teaches you to, to go out there and, and do it. Um, even though we should have went on the road, we didn't do that. That was a big mistake. And um, we really want to do it now. Um, we got Jody working on a couple of things. Hopefully they come through. We're playing. Um, we're looking for a big tour, a big booking agent, or somebody to help because, you know, everybody always needs help. And I'm not too embarrassed to say or ashamed or proud or, you know, we're not bitching. We're not rock stars. We're not nobody. We're we're nothing. And we need we need a tour. We need something, somebody. And Nikki tried years ago, and it just didn't happen. And and you know, I don't have phone numbers of you know, and half the people have died that I knew or, or more now. And we want to get out there, and we really want to go on the road and and play. And um, I'm hoping that um, happens. Yeah, you know, nah, no, no, no hope, Dale. It's going to happen. Look where you are today. Mom is looking down and you're very proud. You got a platinum record from that was released in 84 that where you are in 2014 with We're No Angels. I mean, come on. It's uh, it's all there for the taking. It's just a matter of time. So, And you're on the right track now. So anything that I could do to help you. Uh, uh, we'll get you in New York to open up for somebody. Hey, what's on What's on your bucket list, my man? Is there anything that you well besides getting on the road and and rocking your great music? Uh, anything else uh, you're looking to uh, try to uh, accomplish? Love, uh, play, you know, honestly, any big arena. But it, since living in Los Angeles, it was always the Los Angeles Forum. Oh uh, yeah, I saw Grand Funk in seventy, seventy one, seventy two, seventy three, and seventy four at the Los Angeles Forum. And I mean that's to to go there and and I I, I know New Carlos Colazo really well back in the day and and I didn't take the job he took the job and they made it and 
I remember being at the Troubadour and him coming and holding the, the cover. It wasn't glued yet. And he's like, you know, on Santa Monica Boulevard. And he's like, Dale, look at the, here's the cover. And I'm like, oh, okay, right on. You know, at the time, we didn't think much of it, you know. And they were on Pasha and and whoever else I, they were with. But it was, um, you know, they, they did what they did and they, they made it. And, you know, and then, then also Matt Thorne from uh, Rough Cut and from uh, uh, Stephen Piercy and was also in rap for a short period of time and, and does records a lot of the vocals for Stephen Piercy, does his albums for him uh, from, you know, the singer for rap. And, and we've done a lot of vocals there, guitars at his place. And he's played there two times. And I, every time I see him, I always tell him how much I hate him for that. Yeah, I hate your, guy. your day is coming, Dale. That's like a New Yorker want him to be on stage at Madison Square Garden. I mean, like oh, you got the forum to play yeah. the garden. I mean, but you're the garden of the forum. Yes. Your day is coming, Dale. You, oh. then, you can, then you can laugh at Steven and say, Steve, I got you, brother. I got you. Yeah, well, I mean, you mean uh, Matt? Matt, I can laugh at Matt. Okay, with well, Matt, yeah, that's Matt cool. Matt the bass player, you know. But he he toured with Dio, and and back in um, uh, early '80s, you know, and they they uh, they were the opening band, Rough Cut, and they 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 did all the stadiums, and and they they I guess they went this way, they went east, and they went back west, and you know they they did the forum twice, and I'm like. You know, I never let him down. Let, let you know, <laughs> let him forget about it. And, and uh, yeah, that's that. Madison Square Gardens, of course. Grant Funk did that, and 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 Ron Keel, I found out, had done that, and and, and toured with Bon Jovi after. We were the first band to open for Bon Jovi on the West Coast. Wow, four. That is so cool. Yeah, but I it was a smaller. It was a twelve hundred seat venue, you know, it was uh, Striper, then Angelus, and Bon Jovi. Oh and my goodness! I didn't watch them either. I, I saw him a sound check for a minute, but that's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, your your day will come, Dale. The band sure is called so. Angelus. You can go to their website, angelusband.com. You can go check them out on Facebook and their socials. If you're in Alliance, Ohio, go to Club Two Fifty Three on Saturday, September seventeenth, and you can check out all the dates. In the meantime, you want to go to their YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, because I'm going to play the heck out of Running Like an Outlaw. We've all run like a man. I can, I, back in the day, I could run like a rabbit. Now I can't get out of the driver's seat. We all ran away like an outlaw. And right. they also have a great track, Nothing But Love. My goodness, Dale! It's always it was a it's very a, a pleasure and uh, a you, lot of fun on. chatting with you, my friend. Thank, thank you for having me. Absolutely. And, and keep us keep rocking so much. And if you see Billy Gibson, tell him I said hi. I love their music and been a big fan all my life as well. Absolutely, got to see Billy. I think in two weeks coming to Bethel Woods here in New York with the oh. Willie Nelson Outlaw tour. So oh. I will. I will send him your love if he needs an opening act because ZZ Top is going to go on tour by themselves. I want to say Billy said in October. So they come out to Ohio. They always looking for somebody. So I'll drop your name and uh, see what we can do to help you out, my friend. And Mark Farner. I, I I really want to get one of his armbands. <laughs> yeah. I, I want a Mark Farner armband. Ah, oh, good. He's a, he's a terrific guy. That. That's yeah, pretty cool. Every show afterwards. There you go. All, All right. right, Dale. Well, Thank it only you. gets better than this on Pat Soundbites. We're keep rocking new music and keep supporting great bands like Angelus and Mr. Dale George Lytle right here. Get Thank it you, today. Thank you, my man. Be safe. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Great day. Rock and roll. Thank you.
fucking outlaw.